everybody. My name is Dr. Terry Richardson. I'm the Health Professions Advisor here at California State University Northridge. I'm also a General Bio Advisor. Our office is located in Chaparral Hall, room 5104, and we're open Monday through Friday. Uh, you can make an appointment now online to see an advisor in our department through the CSUN Biology Department website. Today we're going to talk a little bit about all things pre-health. Uh, this is for students who are interested in attending medical school, pharmacy school, dental school, optometry school, podiatry school, veterinary school, physician assistant school, or graduate nursing school. I advise students who are interested in all of those careers. But before we get into the presentation, I just want to give you a little background about myself. I am an alum of CSUN. I have a Bachelor of Arts degree in Biology. I graduated from CSUN in 1998. I then graduated from the University of California Irvine College of Medicine in 2004. I did start a residency in 2004, but after six months I became very ill and my doctors advised me to find a career that's a little bit less stressful. I'm not sure that advising is less stressful, but I do love my job and the whole reason I get up and come to work every day is to help students find the health professions career that's not only going to make them happy but where they can thrive and be productive members of society and support their families uh, in the future. One of the big parts of my job is dispelling myths. Uh, the health professions admissions world is full of myths and stories and some of those myths need to be dispelled. So we're going to talk about a few of them today. The first myth that I hear all the time from students is that I have to be a bio major in college if I want to go to health profession school. And by health professions, I mean med, farm, dental, optometry, etc. The second myth I hear a lot is the opposite. I should purposely not be a biology major because if I'm not a bio major, I will stand out. I'll be more attractive or more competitive or more unique than all of the students who are bio majors and who are applying to medical pharmacy dental school. Third myth that is uh, very prevalent is that I have a better chance of getting into health profession school if I graduate in four years as opposed to five or six or more. Another one, I have a better chance of getting into a health profession school if my undergrad degree is from a UC school as opposed to a CSU. And I hope that I am proof that that particular myth is incorrect. Uh, a couple more before we go into more detail. Another myth is that it's bad or frowned upon to take science courses in summer school. And yet another myth, it is bad or not desirable to take uh, courses at community college. So let's get into these myths. The first myth uh, about the majors. I have to be a bio major or conversely I should definitely not be a bio major. Well the truth is is that since the beginning of time there has never ever been a requirement that you have a specific major in college in order to go to medical school. I've seen students from every major practically on this campus from religious studies to physics to math to art and the medical schools and pharmacy dental schools have no requirement as to what your bachelor's degree major was. It is true, however, that most pre-health, pre-med, pharmacy dental students are bio majors. And the reason for that is that the list of required courses for medical pharmacy or dental school are already contained within the biology major. So the truth is, is that the biology major is the best major if you're trying to get to health profession school in the most timely manner because the major that you pick already contains the pre-health required classes and the BA in biology is our shortest biology degree so I guess by extension you could say that the BA in biology is the best degree if you want to get to health profession school in the shortest period of time but by no means are you required to be a biology major. We do have many students here who don't want to be bio majors. They like the major that they're in. Maybe they're a psych major or a sociology major and that's the bachelor's degree that they want to carry with them when they leave. It may be possible if you're a student and you're not a bio major but you want to go to medical pharmacy dental school to keep your major and mix in the required pre-health classes along with your major. 
The only time that can't occur is if completing your major and the pre-health classes and your general education would in total exceed our 140 unit cap rule here at CSUN. But I welcome you to make an appointment and come in and we can sit down and discuss which major would be best for you to meet your needs and what you're interested in. The myth about I have a better chance of getting into health profession school if I finish college in four years instead of five or six is also a big myth. Just as there are no requirements to what your major should be in college, there's no requirement to how long it takes you to finish your undergrad degree. We have many students that work, sometimes they can only come part time, things like that. So it really doesn't matter how long it takes. However, one of the things that your academic record is showing the health profession schools is your perseverance, your diligence. So you really do need to be full time and full time is 12 units here at CSUN. It's not 15 or 16. So as long as you're full time, 12 units each semester and your grades are good, you are going to be displaying that academic strength that the health profession schools want to see. So please do not be as concerned about the time as the grades and the quality of your work. Does it matter where I went to school? The, it's a prevalent myth in California that you have a better chance of getting into medical school if you go to a University of California school as opposed to a CSU. And looking at the data, you can see that this myth is really just blown out of the water because it really doesn't matter. There is a small list here, though, that I'm going to talk about, about what you should be looking for in your undergraduate institution. You want a place where you're going to be comfortable. If you're comfortable, you're going to do better. You want to look for a place where you have help when you need it. Tutors, advisors, counselors. CSUN is a great place for that. We have tutoring all over the campus for all of our subjects. You want to be at a college where there are opportunities beyond the classroom. If you're going into medicine or pharmacy or dental, you clearly have to have experience in those areas. And you want to look for a place where you can find local hospitals or local practitioners that you can volunteer with. You also want to be in a place, hopefully, with a minimum level of distraction from your coursework. You, uh, it would be foolish to not consider the debt. Uh, as you can see, these figures may need to be updated, but it's approximately $7,000 a year to come to a CSU, and it's a little over $13,000 a year to go to a UC. So you have to think about cost. And keep in mind, after medical or pharmacy or dental school, you're probably going to come out with one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollars worth of debt so you wanna hopefully try to minimize the debt in undergrad because you're gonna have a lot of debt later on class sizes one of the biggest complaints about the UC schools is that the class sizes are very big it's maybe a little bit more impersonal here at CSUN our major biology and chemistry courses are usually not more than about a hundred students each so I believe we have smaller class sizes which by extension gives you better um, exposure to the professors. And finally, will they accept me? Uh, there was a recent news story that UCLA got 90,000 applications for their fall 2013 class, so you obviously need to find an undergraduate institution that will take you. Let's talk about summer school. A lot of people want to take summer school. Uh, sometimes they want to take pre-health required courses in summer school, chemistry or biology or physics things like that. Uh, I have to preface this section by saying it's very rare that there are absolute yeses and absolute noes when it comes to what to do to get into health profession school. So just keep that in mind. In general, however, speaking generally, health profession schools are not big fans of summer school classes because, first of all, you're usually only taking one class at a time in summer school. If you were to get an A in that summer school class, you might imagine a medical school admissions officer would think, well, of course they got an A. They were only taking one class. If they didn't get an A, I would be disappointed. Uh, conversely, if you take that one summer school class and you get a C, you could maybe see how a medical school admissions officer would say, wow, they were only taking one class and they got a C. Also, summer courses are abbreviated. You obviously can't put 16 weeks of coursework into six weeks. 
And sometimes the idea is you're not getting the full benefit of the class if you're taking it in the summer. So those are some issues to think about when considering summer school. Sometimes, however, it may be necessary to take a summer school class. If you need to repeat a course, for instance, and you're not able to get back into it for fall or spring, you may want to take it in the summer. In addition, our three upper division biology core classes, 322, 360, and 380, are always offered in the summer. And a lot of students like to take those in the summer to advance in their coursework. The other question that is often asked to me is, what about taking these health professions courses at a community college? That's a bit of a touchier subject because the truth is, is that community colleges are often seen as less competitive institutions when compared to universities. And in fact, many health profession school websites now state that they recommend you take the prerequisites in the most competitive environment possible. And with language like that, it's really recommended that you try to do all the coursework at a university. Uh, but everyone's different. Some people can't afford to come to a university until they're a junior, or some people can't afford to come to CSUN for summer school. So it's possible, but you should always be talking with an advisor about these things. So that leads us to a discussion of, well, what are these health profession schools looking for anyway? The first and most important aspect of your application to medical, pharmacy, dental, etc. school is always going to be your GPA. And students come in and constantly ask me, why is the GPA so important? What you have to understand is your undergrad GPA, the courses you took, the uh, semester by semester course loads that you took, is, and your GPA is the best indicator of if you can pass the courses that you'll be taking in medical school or pharmacy or dental school. Your GPA is really the only number that they have to look at to see what kind of a student you are. Second most important uh, thing they're going to be looking for is always the entrance test score. MCAT, Medical College Admission Test for Med School, DAT, Dental Admission Test for Dental School, etc. Why are these numbers so important? Well, in medical school and dental school and optometry school there are licensing or board exams that you have to take. And your entrance test score, your MCAT or DAT score, is the best indicator the admissions committees have of if you will eventually pass those licensing exams. So that's why the GPA and entrance test score are always going to be the most important. After that is clinical experience. It's probably not possible to be accepted to a medical school without having some exposure in a hospital or a clinic. Uh, you need to have a letter from a dentist if you're applying to dental school, a pharmacist if you're applying to pharmacy school. So you really need to have some experience in that field. They want to know that you've researched it and spent enough time in the profession to really know that you want to dedicate your life to this. Research is also very important. 80% of students uh, accepted to medical school have done some kind of research. Here at CSUN we have I believe over 30 bio professors who do conduct research and will take undergraduates into their lab. If you want to know more about getting into research, make an appointment and come on in. Letters of recommendation, very important. Usually you need three to five letters of recommendation when applying to medical, pharmacy, any health profession school. So as you're moving through classes, you really need to cultivate relationships with professors so that a year or two or three down the line, when you go back and ask for a letter, they'll remember who you were. And finally, community service. Community service is giving freely of your time in a non-clinical setting. So if you're pre-med you're volunteering at the hospital once a week, you may also want to consider uh, feeding the homeless once a month or tutoring children, learning to read, or coaching a kid's sports team or something like that. Community service, again, doing something for free, you're not getting paid, but it's not in the medical setting. We do have a handout called Activities for Pre-Health Students that you can download from the CSUN Biology Department website. Uh, the next slide uh, forces some students to cry, uh, but it's not meant to make you cry or to make you sad or to get you down. It's meant to present you with actual data, facts, so that you know what's coming. As you can see by the slide here, uh, we have the average GPA accepted uh, in the past year for medical, dental, pharmacy, optometry, vet, and physician assistant schools. 
You'll also see the entrance exam that's required there. And although the data is a couple years old, the number of students that applied and were accepted in 2012. Uh, also there is when does the application open each year and the percent of students accepted that had a bachelor's degree. Some students think they can get into medical pharmacy dental school without a bachelor's degree and it's really not possible too much anymore as you can see by the numbers. And in looking at the number applied and accepted, it may seem overwhelming, it may seem daunting, but I really just want you to have that data so that you know, you know what's coming. Uh, next thing I want to talk about, which might be a good follow-up to showing you the data of how hard it is to get in, is to talk about backup plans. Uh, anyone who's come in to see me uh, will know that one of the questions I always ask is, what's your backup plan? Nobody wants to talk about it, but everybody really needs to have one. If you're a bio major and you apply to medical school and don't get accepted, uh, what, what are you going to do? Uh, here I've listed some common backup plans for pre-health students who are biology majors. There's lab work, there's field work, there's teaching. We always need more teachers. There are other health-related careers that, can, that are less perhaps rigorous uh, to be accepted to. And there are other helping professions. You know, a lot of people want to go into medicine because they want to help people. And what I tell students is there's a thousand ways to help people. And things like becoming a social worker, a career counselor, or a college counselor are all alternative backup plans where you'll still have a career where you're helping people. So those are things to think about. I do also have another handout. It's called Alternatives that uh, we have up on our CSUN Biology Department website. So I welcome you to go there and download it because it does list a bit more information about some of these alternative or backup plans. Finally, what I want to talk about is what I do in the office every day. Um, this is a list of the services we have at the uh, Health Professions Advisement Center. A big part of my job is course selection and sequencing. I believe the single biggest mistake students make is not planning courses correctly. They'll take too many science classes uh, and not mix in general education classes. Or they'll start with all their general education classes first and won't start on any of the science courses until they're done with general ed. So one of the most important things that I do on a daily basis is helping you plan and sequence the classes so that each semester you'll be in a position to get the highest GPA possible and make yourself the most competitive candidate. I can also give recommendations on where to get clinical experience, how to get into community service and research here on campus with our uh, bio professors. We do have a letter collection service so that when it's time for you to apply, we can help you collect your letters and send them out to the medical or pharmacy or dental schools. Personal statement help, uh, between March and June, I probably read about 100 personal statements each year, so I can help with that. We also can help you with the actual applications themselves, both the primary and the secondary applications. And then finally, if and when you get an interview, I can help you out with a mock interview. So those are all very important things, uh, but like I said, the course selection and sequencing is vital. Uh, on this next slide, you'll see that we now have a lot of pre-health clubs here at CSUN. Uh, I do have a little handout in the office that has the email addresses of all of the clubs. That's a document that could change from time to time, so I'm not sure it's going to be up on the website, but it is in my office if you want to come and pick it up. Okay, well, we covered a lot of ground today. I hope that this presentation was useful to you, that you got a lot of information about what it means to be a pre-health student here. Uh, if you have any questions about anything you saw on this video, please make an appointment and come in. This is a very difficult career path to enter. There's a lot of mistakes that can be made, and my goal is to help you get there as smoothly as possible to help you find a career that you're not just going to go to your job every day, but you're really going to love it and you're going to be able to help others stay well. Mm -hmm.